This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. Today we continue laying the foundation with Book 1. In Chapter 6, this is Section 8. What distinguishes an authentic spiritual path from a cult? Hi, David. What distinguishes an authentic spiritual path from that of a cult? What exactly is a cult? Beloved one, the best indicator of an authentic spiritual path is one that instructs that responsibility for your state of mind at any given moment rests with you. The trust is within and cannot be found in persons, places or things outside. Truth is not something that can be found in a book or object. Truth is an experience of the living moment that will dawn of, it, of itself. The spirit uses symbols and sights and sounds of the world including people and music and words of inspiration, scriptures, to help the deceived mind to the point of realization or recognition. These are all stepping stones or metaphors. They all dissolve at the point of recognition, which is an experience within. True spirituality rests on open communication, the release of all attack thoughts and the fear, guilt and anger that they produce. Non-judgment, true humility, defenselessness, gentleness and divine mercy. Any authentic spiritual path will promote forgiveness and advocate laying aside grievances. All are included in the experience of love, for it is unconditional and impersonal. Everyone is equally loved and appreciated. A cult is a symbol or representation of the belief that your state of mind is dependent on a person, place, event or circumstance and is not a decision of your mind. Faith is placed in external authorities and forms and rituals and the underlying experience will always be based on fear no matter how endearing or adoring the devotion seems to be. Ultimately, you can never really love or adore or be devoted to anything specific or anything in form. For truth cannot be found in images and symbols. When you attach to the form or scenario or script you believe will make you happy, a substitute or idol image has been made and accepted as real and is being worshipped. Truth is denied in such an attempt and the pseudo-love will turn to hate and anger in the mind of the leader or follower. What can turn to hate was never the love of God, but was instead the desire to be special and loved in a personal sense. There appears a holier-than-thou mentality in cult thinking, which attempts to raise some people up and put other people down 
and perpetuates a we-they division. Hence, there is always a fear of an external enemy. In true spirituality, everyone is always welcome. For it becomes apparent that we are always meeting ourself. No one is turned away or judged against. Acceptance of the truth is an experience in which no one is labelled and dismissed, for the experience of truth is vast and expansive and all-inclusive. The experience is freely given by God, and the peace and joy and love of God is beyond the possibility of commercialization. There is no reciprocity, giving to get, and authentic spirituality cannot be bought or sold. Love is freely given, and by giving it, it is retained in awareness. What you share is strengthened in your awareness. So by giving love, you become aware that you have love and are love. This is how the mind is awakened by the Holy Spirit from the dream of scarcity, guilt, fear and death. First you learn to forgive, then you are awakened unto eternal life. The opposite of a life of love and forgiveness and trust in God is a condition of fear, guilt, scarcity and anger. This condition is the simplest way to define cult thinking. Because of intense fear and suspicion, cult thinking involves threats, privacy, secrecy, hierarchies and chains of command, attempts at control and manipulation through breaking off communication or using communication to make guilty. It may seem to manifest as a scarcity, hoarding of food, money, possessions and supplies out of a fear that they may run out. It may also manifest under the guise of abundance, power, wealth, fame, psychic powers, energy experiences and phenomenon that are valued in and of themselves. These pursuits, under the guise of spirituality and religion, are distractions and detours to true peace and happiness. When the ego is highly threatened, it may even resort to confrontation, the use of firearms and weapons, violence or suicide as an escape. Cult thinking rests on judgment, for it raises some people up as special good ones and lowers others down as the bad ones. The good ones are praised and loyally adored, while the bad ones are attacked, avoided, blamed, abandoned, excluded or rejected. Cult thinking involves forming cliques around world, worldly and historic beliefs and values of ethnicity or heredity or tradition or geography or nationality or race or gender or age or formal religious practices and rituals. Cult thinking may involve anything specific in the world, as long as boundaries can be kept. 
cult thinking is quick to anger and accuse and sometimes as quick to flee. It is particularly threatened by open direct communication. Future loss is not the greatest fear of cult thinking for present joining and union is what it dreads most. The ego sees complete joining as the abolishment of privacy and separation. This it cannot tolerate. To protect itself, the ego will attempt isolation and rely heavily on fight or flight strategies. Decisions are hid decisions are hastily made and always based in fear reason and patience and cooperation and clear thinking are deemphasized and shared opinions gossip and grievances are rallying points against the perceived external enemy hence the group think mentality moral and ethical systems of behavior around sexuality money and possessions etc and arbitrary standards are often cited and defended as good reasons for attacking condemning avoiding blaming excluding or rejecting the persons things groups institutions or countries that have been labeled bad or wrong the judging against based on perceived differences is the rationale the ego uses for dismissing isolating and separating tendency that is so highly valued by the ego all cult thinking is based on fear though it is not seen that the fear is not really based in the images of the world persons places things events etc the underlying fear is the fear of god and the holy spirit which strikes terror in the ego darkness is afraid of the approach of light the opposite of love is fear but love is all encompassing and has no opposite cult thinking is therefore no real threat to a mind that is devoted to loving a clear free mind free of judgment is very capable of forgiving or seeing the false as false the still mind rests in god and who can fear when there is love i am so grateful to teach and learn that innocence is real and guilt and condemnation are false witnesses i am so grateful to learn that nobody is ever to blame and that it is impossible to be unfairly treated cult thinking is just another name for the ego or the world of darkness jesus tells us to be of good cheer and to be happy learners for he has overcome the world a misperception can always be corrected by a miracle cult thinking and cults are errors for they come not from our heavenly father a child of god need not seek outside and fall for the ego's games of attack and defense judge not lest ye be judged is an instruction not to attempt something you are incapable of a mind that values stillness and quiet and peace is a mind that does not attempt to judge 
forgiveness and non-judgment are synonymous. If we want peace, we must hold every thought up to the light of truth. If a thought does not come from God, the only thing to do is to release it and harbour it no longer. Manipulation is of the ego, for God did not create it. Betrayal is of the ego, for God did not create it. Abandonment is of the ego, for God did not create it. Attack is of the ego, for God did not create it. Rejection, exclusion, avoidance, isolation, condemnation, scarcity, fear, anger, guilt and even death are all of the ego, for God did not create them. If these or any of the fearful beliefs, thoughts and emotions the ego sponsors are believed in as the truth, the world will outpicture or witness to this belief. That is why these beliefs must be questioned. When the mind clings to and protects these beliefs, thoughts and emotions, upset is unavoidable. Forgiveness is the laying aside of all these transitory beliefs, thoughts and emotions. Forgiveness of illusions brings peace, happiness, love and freedom. How magnificent is the perspective that simply sees the false as false? How glorious is the mind that recognizes itself as one? The mind that is shared with God is pure oneness and knows not of judgment. For in oneness there is nothing to judge between. This mind is forever innocent for life and being are in the mind of God. Holy child of God, you are innocent forever. Hallowed be thy name and the name of our Creator God. Thy kingdom has come. Thy will is done. Amen.